Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a a different kind of video than anything I've ever done before. First thing I need to preface before we get going, though, is that if you're here because of the video that's probably gone up a day or two before this one, where I talk about the changes that are going to be going on in the channel from uh, late September up until the middle of December, then uh, there's no information regarding any of that in this video. This is entirely about the past of the channel. This is nothing to do with the future. I'm not going to talk about the future of the channel at all. I am purely going to talk about the past of it. And that's what this video is about. This video is extremely self-indulgent, and to be honest, it's more for me than for anything else. This is just to let me have a think. Before all of the changes happen, before what the channel means to me kind of changes a bit, I want to take, I have no idea how long, possibly hours, possibly minutes, I don't know, just to talk about the channel. To talk about what it is to me, what it, what it has been, the changes it's gone through, how it's developed, and some varying different things. Some things that I can't talk about in other videos, because when I make a video, if it's a standalone video, I'm, I work off the assumption that a person viewing it hasn't seen any other video. Because then, if I say something, there's no sort of in-joke. There's nothing that doesn't make any sense. If I'm, if I'm making part of a series and I'm on part two or part three, I assume that you've watched all of the previous parts of a series. So if I reference things earlier in the series, that's fine, but I won't reference things in other videos. Other series, things like that. So. This is partly me looking at the channel and talking about things that I couldn't do in a video, any other video, because it would be too disjointed. And I want to just have everything in one big lump here in the middle in a nice, quiet, simple place where we can just sit back and relax and I can talk for quite possibly hours. I don't know really. Um, also, if you're wondering what I'm wearing, um, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I saw this thing on Amazon ages ago. It's it's a it's a light grey jacket with black and red roses in the material. I don't really know how the jacket making system works, but um, I looked at it and I thought that is the most crazy and ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Who in their right mind would wear it? And then about a month later, I purchased it. And yes, I have only worn this out of the house once. Which is kind of shocking when I think about how much it cost me. But, um... It's kind of a bit too gaudy to wear in any other video, but... This is a very self-indulgent video. This is... Probably only going to be ever seen by people who were rather interested in the channel anyway, so... I feel like I can take a little bit of liberty here. I can be a little bit more without any facade for the benefit of others. I'm digging myself a hole by saying that, aren't I? <laughs> that doesn't mean everything I do is a facade, it just means sometimes I do certain things or say certain things to simplify the process for other people rather than have them watch hundreds of hours of video for the sake of explaining one tiny thing. Anyway. I suppose the first thing that I should do is explain the very beginning of the channel. I'll start at the beginning and work our way back to the end. Talk about how the channel started um, in the very beginning. And yes, I will address the elephant in the room. I will address that, I promise. I probably, I'm going to try and address as much as I can. I started the channel entirely on a whim. It was not for any... It wasn't planned. It wasn't anything. It was just me doing it because I was curious. Because I, I'd watched YouTube for varying different reasons over a great many years. So I had... It had crossed my mind in the past that I would do something like this, but it had never been a serious thought. It was never a, yes, I will definitely do this, and I will make it regular, and it will be meaningful and important, and it was never any of that. It was just a, yeah, that could be cool, that's something on my radar, might possibly do it one day, but realistically, probably not. Like when you have your dreams about having a mansion, or an Aston Martin, or something. 
Sure, it's fun to dream, but you know in the back of your mind the reality of the situation is that it will probably never happen. So I just finished building my new PC as I'd moved over from gaming on a on an Xbox to moving onto a PC. And the main reason I did that is actually because of this game. I'd watched Subnautica on YouTube, the original Subnautica I'd watched on YouTube, and then I knew that this game, Subnautica Below Zero, was in early access, and I thought to myself, well, I can either wait for the full release, and then wait for the console release on Xbox, or I could get myself a PC, which is something I've been thinking about doing and wanting to do for a long time, and then I could play it myself. So that's what I decided to do. And while I was in the process of making it, making the PC that is, it struck me that the PC was basically what I needed in order to do this as well, if I at the time decided that that was what I wanted to do. I suddenly realised that the only thing that would then stop me would be myself. I had the hardware that I needed, with the exception of a microphone and a camera, but you know, they weren't difficult to get hold of. <laughs> We're not even going to talk about the fact that... Oh, I know the microphone... I don't know if I... I don't know at what point I've addressed this. I think I've addressed this a couple of times. I know the microphone quality isn't great. I know there's a lot of white noise on the microphone, which really, really annoys me. I really wish that wasn't the case. But, um... I will upgrade the microphone, I promise. Eventually, I'm going to upgrade the microphone. I'm hoping to do that within the next couple of months. I'm going to get something better. There'll be better quality. Hopefully, there'll be no more white noise. And that will improve. But, anyway... So I finished building the PC, and I started looking around and thinking, okay, I've got the hardware I need, what sort of software do I need? Because, of course, like, there was no way at the time, i just finished building a gaming PC, so, I mean, you know, she's not, like, top of the line, you know, she's not, like, Bugatti Veyron levels of gaming computer, but at the same time, she's no Model T Ford either. So I wasn't exactly, um, you know, drowning in money, but at the same time, I, I had to be careful about what sort of software I looked at. So. I was looking into software, and then I found some pretty good software uh, in terms of recording and in terms of editing. I found myself the... just scooch myself over some bit more centred for you. And not the microphone over in the process. I... I found the software that I needed, and I realised I then had the hardware, I had the software, and I had a jumping off point, i.e. I had some Nautica, even though some Nautica actually ended up being the fourth video that I ever made. I'll explain why that is in a minute. And I just decided to try. To see what would happen, purely for my own sake, rather than for, you know, anything else. Not because at the time I had any grand dreams of entertaining anybody or anything along those lines. I had no investment at that point, and, or any ambitions. I purely wanted to experiment and see what I could do, because... At university, in my first year, I had to produce an advert as uh, a project. One of the pieces of coursework I had to submit was an advert for a business, which of course was a video. And that was the first time I'd ever made a video before. And it was a pain, it was a real pain making it because I had to work with some extremely nasty software, looking back at the software uh, in comparison to what I have today. and. And it was a pain, and I really didn't enjoy it, but at the same time, it felt like I had the sense that I knew it was the software that was holding me back, and I knew that if I had the... maybe if I had different software, different hardware, different material to work with, maybe it would be a bit more fun. So I decided to look into it, with the PC, and then the software, and then the games, in order to see whether I could actually get anywhere with it, and whether I could have any fun with it. And it was a rocky start. It was an unbelievably rocky start. Oh gosh, where do we even begin with this? So, this wasn't actually the first video I ever made. The first video I ever made was actually, if I can find it, the first video I ever made, if I've still got it in here, was actually a Skyrim video. Again, I've been playing for many, many years. Um, I was never planning on uploading that, and I probably never will upload it, um, because there's, there's no humour in it, it's purely um, more a test of microphone, camera, and recording software, um, and sort of working out the practicalities of how I was going to get everything working together. 
Um, but this was the first proper video I did. This was the first video I actually properly edited and produced and tried to uh, make something out of and then upload. And my word did it have its problems, as I probably addressed, because it was so long ago I can't even remember. Um, oh, that must mean we've just ticked over four months of age on the channel. <laughs> That's nice. Um, it had its problems, it did. Uh, I know I was constantly drifting out of frame, I was like, I was over here, so I was constantly doing this all of the time. And there was this huge space over here on the side that was completely empty and there was nothing happening in it. The lighting wasn't as, as well, I was going to say as good as it is now, it's still not great, but it's it's better than where it was. The lighting was bad, the audio levels were atrocious, those doors sounded like thunderstorms going off, and I sounded like a little church mouse, and... Oh, Editing it back was... It was a nightmare. <laughs> it was an absolute nightmare trying to get the... trying to get that working better, but... But at the same time, it was important, because I realised after I'd made it that I was willing and I actually wanted to carry on doing this, because I hadn't been disheartened by that. I was disappointed, sure, that it hadn't gone great, but at the same time, I, I wanted to carry on and I wanted to do better. I wanted to improve on that and do better than that, which is why it bugged me that for the longest time, this was my most viewed video, which really, really annoyed me, because uh, over here uh, oh, never mind. in the section on the front, I'm not going to change the pages in case my internet dies again, because it's been a pain today but um, but oh gosh, I don't know if I can show you any of this without breaking copyright hopefully not <laughs> but yes, here where I have my popular uploads. For the longest time this was the most popular video, which which really annoyed me, because it meant that that was kind of what people saw rather than anything else, you know. They didn't see videos that had come later, they saw this, which I didn't like. I didn't like that that's what was right there, like, oh, most popular video, oh, that must be his best video, that must be, that must be him at his very best of humour and editing abilities, best hardware, best software, best everything. No, it's my worst. <laughs> Which is annoying, and I don't know why. I don't know why, like, my first week of videos, roughly, all got more views, and then all of a sudden, view average viewership went down a bit. Maybe... It's a little trick on YouTube's part, and like the first few videos that the channel uploads, they overly promote in order to try and encourage you to keep going. I won't put it past YouTube to do something like that, so I don't know, maybe that was the case, I don't know. Or maybe it just happened that it was a coincidence and I happened to upload SCP at the time when interest in uh, the Unity remake had just bubbled up again. Because it did bubble up at a, at a point. I'm not quite sure when, but... Maybe that was it, maybe it was a combination of those different things, I don't know, but... It was a rocky start, but it slowly, slowly things got a little bit better. Um, we started Auction Not Included, which was another game that I uh, I really liked and I really enjoyed, both watching, reading and playing, particularly as it constantly developed and constantly changed and constantly evolved. So we started off with that and that went a bit better, that was a bit calmer, that was a bit more relaxed. Um, it wasn't a horror game. So I was able to just chill a little bit and take it a little bit more easily and ease myself into the channel a little bit better, which might possibly have been a better place to start, I don't know. But that was a little bit better and I was quite happy with where this went and this was the start of a bit of a monster, but we will, I'll talk about a couple of the specific playlists in and one of the, the series in a bit more sort of a general light of the forests of Nordsk auction not included. I want to talk about them separately in a bit more of a, a general light rather than talking about them sort of episodically and it being sort of scattered out, I just want to talk about them the whole series in one chunk and make this all simpler. So at that point we then moved on to another video of SCP, which was a bit better, but also a bit worse, in the sense that this time the audio levels were balanced a bit better and I was actually in frame this time, and then some circumstances occurred which made things a bit more complicated. Um, 
certainly in terms of editing. I won't go into what they were, but basically something happened that made the entire thing a pain in the butt, and I felt that maybe this was the wrong game to start off with. <laughs> so then I decided we should move to Subnautica instead, and we should try playing Subnautica. And my giddy aunt. We'd solved all the problems of the past, but we got a whole heap of new ones instead. I... <laughs> oh my word. The frame rate in this video is atrocious. It's about 10 frames a second. Because... For some reason, um... I th I th the best that I can narrow it down to is that my... Recording software wasn't able to encode everything that was going on quick enough. So the computer was saying we don't have enough resources to both put the game on the screen and also record it fully so we're going to downgrade the recording while keeping the game good. And at this point I hadn't learned to be monitoring my uh, my recording while it was going along in order to check that everything was okay which I now do all the time obviously as I'm always doing whenever I'm looking up. I'm looking up at my second screen where I've got my uh, recording software running. And I didn't notice the frame rate was really being an issue. Um, I might have noticed it at one moment, but I thought that, oh, this is just a temporary thing. So, that was a pain. That was a royal pain, because that rather ruined that episode, because it's really difficult to watch. It was really difficult to edit, because you you watch it, and it gives you a headache, because your brain is try your brain is so used to at least 30 frames a second, and most of the time, for most people, probably 60 frames or even more, in TV, YouTube, everything basically so looking at it in such a low set of frames is very very annoying and of course it was the beginning of games with enormous file sizes which on my terminally low internet speed wasn't much fun either but we got through it and again I wasn't discouraged I was annoyed because I knew it was going to be the start of a special series and I I was irritated that it was going to start so poorly um, but I knew that I could carry on and I could make it a bit better so again, I wasn't discouraged and I wanted to carry on, carry on working, carry on fighting and making sure that that I could do better, because I knew that I could. And I'd already made four videos at this point, so I thought I might as well keep going. And so I did. And I started my double barrel shotgun of horror, which is possibly one of the most constant things on the channel. I think it is the only thing that dates all the way back, with the exception of myself. It's the only thing that dates all the way back to the very birth of the channel, because everything else has changed. The camera has changed in, in some small ways, lighting has changed, the, the positioning of the microphone has changed numerous times, I've changed, my confidence has changed, my humour has changed, a huge amount of things have developed and evolved on the channel, but the shotgun never has. The shotgun has always been the same system. The shotgun has always been the same way, and my Gideon did it start interestingly <laughs> because the house in the woods was really good which was great because I hadn't really forayed into the indie game market much because as much as Subnautica was a big draw that took me away from Xbox and towards not to like say that PlayStation is better or anything along those lines I've never been on a PlayStation and nothing about PlayStation don't get into a console war please I far too tired to deal with that tonight. I'm just using that as the specific example of what I was on. But what brought me away from console and onto a PC was also the indie market. I wanted to see indie horror games and explore them because they were something that I really enjoyed on YouTube because they were always different, they were always interesting, exciting, you never knew what was going to happen. Some of them were great, some of them were terrible and it was, it was interesting. And I'm glad that I that was one of the things we were able to do on the channel because I do love the indie market as much as I have my I have my problems with it and I think it, it, it falls short at times at the same time it was also the opportunity for something wonderful was as deep as the valleys are the hills are uh, beautifully tall as well so the house in the woods was a great one and it's it was fun and exciting and I liked it and I really enjoyed it and then back to bed which was the one that came after it which was a royal pain in the butt because it was looking back at it as best I can remember what happened nearly four months ago looking back at it if I played that today I probably wouldn't bother uploading it um, particularly after having played Veiled but uh, we'll get back to that a bit later um, 
Yes, and I think it's... <laughs> with the exception of one moment in the forest, I think Back to Bed is the only time I've had a proper rage on the channel. I got genuinely angry and annoyed, which I was a little bit disappointed with because I didn't want it to reflect badly on the game, but that was an interesting little point of development. That it only took me five videos to find an inducement of rage. <laughs> but then things kind of got a little bit back to normal, really. Things moved on to a bit more sensibility. I decided that possibly Unity Remake had some sort of curse on it, and that I should stop playing the Unity Remake, and I should go back to the original version, which I had a lot more familiarity with, and I was a lot more interested in, and I was a lot more secure in. So I started playing the original one. And that went a lot better, with the exception of the very last video, and as I said, I'll talk about longer-running series in general a bit more uh, later, but I'll talk about SCP because it's relatively short and there's not much to say. With the exception of the last video, with the, um, the bug that happened where that gas sound effect was going on, which caused an increase in the white noise, which really annoyed me, because the white noise is a problem that's been on the channel since day one, and it's bugged me since day one. And as of yet, I haven't had the opportunity to, um to change that. So I was I was very pleased when we were able to uh, get into SCP Containment Breach, the original version, and it worked quite well. It was relatively painless, there weren't many problems, and it was good because it was a game where I could very much relax in because I knew what I was doing, I knew what I needed to do, and I could just breathe and play the game, and it was from playing that that my humour developed quite a bit and I kind of learned a fair amount about humour and games in general, which I'm very really, I'm really glad that that was a thing that was able to happen. Okay, what came next? Um, Small Island Woes and Empress Gate. So there's not a lot to say about this. Again, it was interesting because, like the first shotgun, it was what I thought was a very good game partnered with a not quite so interesting game. As I found Small Island Woes to be interesting, but... Excuse me. It was interesting, but it wasn't really what I would describe as being consequential. It was an interesting little side note, sure, but it wasn't anything um, particularly astounding. As opposed to Emboscade, which was interesting because it was very simple, while at the same time very fun, and that's what I, I really liked about that one. And this was, in and of itself, an interesting video as well, because this was only 24 minutes long, because both of the games were quite short, and this is where my quota kind of developed from, because previously before then, Things had been a little bit random, to an extent, in terms of the length of videos. This one I hadn't really planned on a length at all, I just kind of stopped it at a rough point, which happened to be 35 minutes. This, I always kind of knew that this would be about 40 minutes, which was fine. Um, this I wanted to be longer, but it couldn't be because of uh, certain problems. And this just ended up being long because Pack to Bed took me forever to get through. But we it was at roughly this point that I then developed my quota of ideally having about 30 to 50 minutes worth of um, videos going up per day which is why usually although there's the system of one video a day usually um, if I record a video and it's only short if I can't put it into a shotgun of horror then what I'll do is upload it alongside something else that's relatively short as well. So today I'd probably upload sort of these two videos together if you to sort of explain why the one video a day rule isn't always followed. Um, routine and don't do it was also interesting because routine was a weird one because the whole point of the game was that you go through the same process again and again and again. You go through a daily routine and you you do the same things and then there are subtle changes which are important but subtle. And that was interesting to me because that presented me with a new problem in editing and that problem was how to balance the 
game because of course when you're playing the same morning routine four times over you don't want to show the whole thing four times over because this has never been a channel of unedited content and it never will be so when I was editing it it was tricky for me to decide what I should leave in and what I shouldn't because not only was it I didn't want to bore people by showing the same thing over and over again it was also tricky because my humour is very improvised, um, with the exception of the comedies that, again, I will talk about later. With the exception of the comedies, I... All of my humour is entirely improvised, and it's entirely off the back of what is going on in the game. I don't go into the game with any plans or ideas of what I'm going to do in it, or what I'm going to say. It's entirely off the game, which is why I try to pick games that look like they're going to give me stuff to work with, so that I can have some humour in the videos where I can, if you can be kind enough to describe it as humour. And with routine being the same thing over and over again, of course I was seeing things that I'd already seen before, so I'd see something, I'd make a joke about it, but then when I'm seeing it for the second time, I then have to try and think of another joke about the same thing. And then when I'm getting on to the third time, I'm completely running out of jokes that I can do with a coffee machine, or a dead body, or something. I, I run out of ideas of, of what to say, so that was ended up being quite tricky because I couldn't leave in the great big pauses of me literally having nothing to say because there was nothing to talk about because we said everything that I could say and at the same time trying to leave enough in of what was actually meaningful uh, commentary of the game itself so that there was actually I was demonstrating all that the game was while at the same time not boring people so that was an interesting little challenge in and of itself and then, something very special happened. Something very special happened indeed. The babysitter happened. That sounds like the beginning of a, 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 <laughs> a confession on Reddit with a certain little red marker at the top of the post. But, um, yeah. The babysitter was a complete accident. That also sounds a bit like a confession, but... I was looking for more games to play. And... I stumbled across it. I stumbled across. I, I stumbled across this one, and I looked at it. And the screenshots that were uh, on the side. If you're not familiar with how Witchio pages work, you basically have the description going down the middle, and then on the side you have some pictures of uh, screenshots of the game in order to demonstrate it. And this one demonstrated pictures of different characters with little bo boxes of text under them. And I just thought to myself, oh, okay, so they're not showing you the the in-depth bit of the game because they, you know, they want to keep like the monsters and the jump scares and the environments a bit secret, so they're just showing you like the setup, the basic environments where you start, different characters, etc, etc, etc. So I was thinking, you'd get into the game, talk to some people, they'd send you on some sort of a quest or something, and then you'd go off and do that thing, and that would then begin the horror game. Oh, how wrong I was. Because that was, obviously, and in reality, it was a visual novel, which I had never even experienced before, I'd never heard of before, and it was just... It was not something that had ever been a thing before in my life or on my radar or anything, and it shocked me, and it surprised me, and it it impressed me, because it was not something that I'd ever experienced before, but at the same time it was really good. And usually when there's something really good in life, usually I've at least heard about it. Not always, but it's not often that I make a discovery of something which I've never seen any evidence of, exi of its existence, and I really like it. Frequently I discover evidence of the existence of things that I don't like, but infrequently I do I find things I do. And visual novels were one of those things for me. And as much as I say at the end of it that the babysitter was uh, fantastic and brilliant and I loved it, looking back at it I still feel the same way. Even though that was the first visual novel I played and read, I then went on to do more later, and it became a bit of a thing on the channel, and it became one of the styles that the channel has, one of the types of videos that go up on the channel, rather than it just being this occasional thing. It actually became part of the channel's identity in and of itself. And even upon all the other ones that I've played, The Babysitter does remain my favourite visual novel that I have done. Partly because of the sentimental value that I apply to it because of how impressed I was with it, but also because of um, 
because I've just 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 the way it is written impressed me so well, and you can see that from the way that I then go back to play more of them, and I did my my the beginning of my showcase um, style of video, which I don't do very often, but occasionally I do, or I showcase one developer and multiple different games by them, which I looked at Crux Gamer Studios' other two novels that they'd done, and I. I enjoyed those as well, and it was lovely to see how the studio and their writing style had developed. So that was kind of the beginning of visual novels, that was how they all started, and they went on to be something a lot bigger than I, I ever thought they would. And another video that was almost a sort of a discovery and an experiment in of it, uh, itself was Aperture and Tender, the shotgun, because as much as I, a lot of my humour is relatively childish, a lot of it's quite silly, um, at the same time, I always do try to take things vaguely seriously in terms of the game and try to pay the respect to the game that I feel it does deserve. And Aperture and Tender were a bit different in the sense that for some reason I was in some sort of a mood and a little bit in Aperture and very much so in Tender, I basically spent the entire video taking the mickey out of both of them. Um, in a, and I try to do it in a sort of a good-natured and a, a light-hearted way, not, you know, actually uh, you know, aggressively and unproductively criticising them. But I try to do that in a, in a comedic way, and as much as that isn't something that I've done frequently, it is something I've done from time to time in little parts throughout bigger videos. You know, I'll take a moment to dabble in that type of humour. So that when that video itself was an interesting development in the sense that it helped me develop a new style of comedy in a way, or helped me explore a new part of my comedy that I hadn't seen before. The Last Winter. The Last Winter was also a bit of a, a, a problem in the sense that I realised right at the end that I'd actually already seen it be played, which for a, no a normal game like Auction Not Included, for example, is fine, because when you're watching it, you're looking at the mechanics, you're looking at how to do things, it's kind of a technical look at things. And of course, every colony is different, every set of problems is different, so it's not really a problem. With something that I would do as a standalone, like The Last Winter, an individual horror game, if I realise that I have played it before, or played it before, or watched it before, um, or seen a fair amount of evidence for it before, as much as I think that I might enjoy playing it myself, I'm not going to do that, certainly not on camera, because a certain of the novelty and a certain degree of the exploration of the game is obviously lost. Like reading a book for the second time, it's always different, it's never quite the same. And I realised, I can't remember precisely when, either late in the recording or at the end or while I was editing it I realised that I've actually seen it before and that that annoyed me somewhat that I hadn't realised that earlier because it impacted the the comedy and the style and there were other problems within it like the um, the potentially copyrighted music at the beginning and then there was a certain puzzle in it which was the beginning of my distaste of puzzles, puzzles and games um, that took me ages to figure out mainly because I'm a moron but that in itself was another sort of stepping stone of development and me getting a deeper understanding of, of certain different things. And speaking of development, Schizophrenia Simulation, which, which as much as I've said in other parts, like the, the shotgun, the, the rest of it, Developments on the channel usually do not start well. They usually are a bit rocky, they're a bit problematic, they're a bit messy, but then they breed into something a bit better. The exception to that is Visual Novels with the Babysitter and Schizophrenia Simulation with my Sober Games list of videos. Because I played it purely because I was curious. I downloaded it, I didn't actually think I was going to record it, um, but in the end I, I decided that I would and then I could then make the decision in post whether or not I actually wanted to upload it as a video or not. And looking back, I'm very glad that I did, and I'm very glad that I played it, because I took it seriously, and I wanted to do that from the moment I saw it. I knew that that's what I was going to do with it. And, and I'm very 
glad that that was a thing that happened because I discovered it purely by accident. I was scrolling through other games and I happened to look at that and the name of it caught my attention. Uh, the description of it very much caught my attention saying that it was a uh, relatively accurate depiction of what life with schizophrenia was like and that interested me and I wanted to explore it and see what sort of things it was. So that's how that started and I'm glad that it did start because it began something which is important to me and I will talk again when I'm talking about different playlists I will talk more about the sober games a bit later and um, and 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 what what they mean in a slightly wider context rather than in an individual context so <laughs> oh gosh. then we went on to perennial not perennial, perennial. <laughs> this was the beginning of my long-standing habit of horribly mispronouncing everything. I'm really bad at pronunciations, and this was a beautiful, beautiful, horrible example of it. Um, there's not really a lot to say in this in in this particular little uh, moment, other than purely to say that that was the beginning, but most certainly not the end of my horrible tendency to mispronounce everything. Oh, where do we go to next? Um, SCP, SCP ended faster than I than I thought it would and that I kind of wanted it to. Because um, we ended up only doing six videos, which I'm, I'm glad that, that, you know, when I say it ended sooner than I wanted it to, I don't mean like I wanted to pad out the series, I wanted to to force more out of it, you know, sort of wring more out of it than, than was reasonable. But, um... It was, it was a little bit sad to see that end because that had been a very successful series. It was nice to sort of close the series relatively early on in the channel's lifetime, even though it's only been going four months. But it was nice to kind of see something come to a close because one of the things with this channel is obviously it doesn't really have an end. There's no goal. It's just kind of like a. It sounds really bad to say this, but it's just kind of a delaying a deadline permanently. You know, every video that I upload delays the deadline by another 24 hours. And, yeah, it sounds horrible to describe it like that, but it's a kind of a factual way of doing it. But seeing a series end, a series that had gone well, a series that I liked, a series that I was quite proud of, seeing that go around in a circle and come all the way back to the beginning and we finish, I was quite proud of that because that allowed me to get a little bit of perspective and say when I properly try and when I do what I want to do I know that I can start something and then get to the end of it and actually complete things which for all of my other creative projects and I've had an awful lot of them from writing to producing and many other different projects that I've done. Finishing them is something I'm never good at because I start on something and I get really motivated for it and I sort of power through and I make loads of good progress and then I burn out, I lose interest in it and I never go back to it after a while which is a shame because then it means we never get more like 20% of the way through something which ending, ending this series was nice because it was me seeing that that didn't always have to be the case and that I could actually get to the end of something if I tried and it was something that I was actually enjoying and if I was careful with it and I didn't do so much that I just burned myself out which is why there why series are always scattered why there's a general rule of about four days on a series with you know the forest and SCP and and, and subnautical and all the rest of it traditionally I will wait four or five days before one episode goes up to then do another episode so that it doesn't, partly so it doesn't burn me out and don't lose interest in it, and also because I don't want to um, to bore people. Because if, you know, Subnautica was 18 videos long, if for 18 days there was nothing be up, going up on the channel but Subnautica, people would probably get extremely bored very, very quickly. So it would. it's always been a, a want of mine to have variety, which surprises me. Because I knew we'd have series like SCP and Subnautica and Ocean Not Included, and I knew we'd have the occasional standalone, like um, The Last Winter. I think that's the, the first proper example, will be another proper example of that. Um, Albedo, for example. 
I knew we'd have those standalones, I knew we'd have the series, and I knew we'd have the indie games, um, the smaller ones and the longer ones, and I thought that would be enough, I thought that would be enough variety. Uh, looking back at that decision now, I realised that it never was going to be enough variety for what I wanted, but somehow, quite quickly, I managed to stumble upon enough things in order to make that more variety. I invented the idea of the shotgun in order to have multiple games in the same video. Well, I didn't invent it, okay, <laughs> now, I, should, I should preface that before somebody jumps into the comments to shout at me. Um, I didn't invent that format, I adapted it um, for my own purposes, but I adopted that format. Um, visual Novel started, and uh, later uh, the Sober Games started, and then a little while later the Comedy started, and at that point, there were a lot of different things going on in the channel, and I liked that, because it meant even if I was a bit burnt out by something, if I was, you know, burnt out by Subnautica or SCP or visual novels or anything that I was doing, I could switch gears and do something else. I could write a comedy, or play a standalone, or anything, and I could just do it in a different way. And the additional flexibility of not recording to sort of demand, if that makes any sense, because many people record tomorrow's video today, basically. They'll record Monday's video on Sunday, and then Tuesday's video on Monday, so they can then upload overnight, and then everything's fine. This all makes perfect sense. Because of my internet, I knew that I'd never be able to do that, so I traditionally try to stay about three or four days ahead of my schedule, so that there's always enough time if, like with Subnautica, there was a big file size, or if my internet just goes down or goes really slow at some point, as it, as it very much likes to do. So, because of that, then that, that then allowed me to change my style if I wanted to, because I could say, okay, there's, there's an episode of Subnautica that's due, it's been a few days since we had a last one, but that's still a few days away in terms of what I actually need to record, so if I'm not in the mood to do Subnautica right now, I can still do something else, and then just have that uploaded a bit later, and then I can come back to whatever it is that I'm burnt out from right then and there. I can do that a bit later when I'm more ready for it. Which allowed me to, in my own little way, try to maximise the qualities of videos by not sacrificing when they came out, but at the same time also being able to do them when was best for me. Because when I do videos when, the, the, when they are best for me, and what is best for me, that makes a more natural and a more human and I hope a more funny performance for me rather than um, me forcing stuff out because oh we haven't done a shotgun in ages or oh so not because over to you or whatever which relates very much to um, the end of the auction not included series but as I said I'll come back to that later oh gosh <laughs> This was Roller Coaster. I teach English history for an hour while playing an impossible horror game was... It was horror game, wasn't it? Or was it just impossible game? No, just impossible game. This was a roller coaster, um, from beginning to end, because I thought it was going to be perfectly ordinary. I, I downloaded it purely because it was a game with the same name that I have. So I thought, that's interesting. That's, that's curious. It's got my name on it. I should probably play it. So I thought that everything would be fine, at which point I then realized that it was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be, and I just decided to um, to do something a bit weird with it. I carried on playing it and banging my head against the wall, trying to win, trying to beat it. Not that I ever did. Um, and no, I have no intention of ever going back to it. I don't know. I might go back to it one day, but I, it's certainly not on my radar. Um, I decided to adapt another idea of another channel which had, in a very similar circumstances, been playing a game, a horror game, uh, not making much progress, banging the head against the wall, trying to win, but aware of the fact that they couldn't just not talk, because then there'd be no footage, and they didn't have anything to talk about, because it was just the same stuff being done over and over and over again, um, so they couldn't, they didn't have any new material to work with in order to bounce their humour off. So they started talking about the history of their country. They started talking about the history of America, and I, I that is one of my favourite videos that uh, from somebody else that I that I have on YouTube. It, it's a very fond 
I'm very fond of that video and I really like it because it's really interesting just to see something that I'd never seen on YouTube before, just a fully improvised comedy out of nowhere about a ridiculous and hilarious subject. And it's the kind of humour that I like. I always like taking something normal or something serious and just making it ridiculous, making it absurd, making it silly and just doing, just having fun with it basically. And that is exactly what I did, but because I'm not American, because I'm English, I decided, well, the obvious thing for me to do is to do the same thing, but for um, English history instead of American history. And at the time, it never crossed my mind that that would go up. I did that for... I started going off on English history uh, for two reasons. One, because um, I didn't want to bore myself doing editing as I was editing the video, because of course I couldn't turn the recording off, because I needed to have the recording on so that if that was my winning attempt that I had the recording turned on for it and it would actually record it. Um, so that was the reason that I, I started going off and also because I was curious. It was an idea that had been sort of thrown around in my brain for a little while. I thought I might do that at some point but I could never think of how. I could never think of the position that I could do it in because the position that it had been for the originator of the idea um, was a very impromptu and a very it's just happened kind of situation rather than anything that had been planned or predetermined so because it was fully improvised and that was never something that I could bring about and I suddenly realised when I was playing the game this is the exact same situation it's a different game and it's a different person but it's the same situation so this is the opportunity I've been looking for I can just witter and blabber and waffle about absolute rubbish and try to make it funny in order to see whether it would end up being funny and at the time of editing I didn't think it was particularly funny it was interesting but it wasn't what I would consider funny and it was more interesting looking back on it because it was something I had done rather than for anything else and I looked at it and I thought this probably isn't actually going to be entertaining for anybody else which is why I diverged from the standard titling system as you've ever as, as every video previously had been um, of it being the name of the game, and then the uh, either the format, like for the Shogun's of Horror, or the um, like the subtitle, you know, like Temperature Mismanagement, Shaving a Snowstalk, Escaping, Demons and Betrayal, etc. Um, I diverged from that because I wanted it to be obvious that it wasn't a normal video. It was a weird video, it was a different thing, it was off the wall, and I actually uploaded it on my birthday. And I kind of did that on purpose, because I was choosing sort of when it should come out and whether it should go up with anything else, and I just decided, you know what, let's have this silly idea of on my birthday something weird goes up. Rather than a normal video, something weird and different, freaky goes up, which I was perfectly happy with doing, because of course I, I knew that I wouldn't have to think about ever doing that again for another 365 days so I knew that that it was perfectly fine for me to do that system because if the channel survived a whole year after that point then I would be able to continue that tradition and if the channel didn't survive to that point then I didn't need to worry because of course the channel's not there I don't need to worry about it but obviously this was the spawning of the story time with Phil and my uh my varyingly pre-written system, I suppose. <laughs> some of them were pre-written, some of them weren't. Um, it always varied. No two videos have been exactly the same, but... Um, I was talking with somebody on Reddit about... Uh, I just finished editing this thing, and I was basically saying that I played a game for two and a half hours, and then I'd spent ages and ages editing it, and... Um, at that point they asked, oh, so you make YouTube videos? And I said, yes. Uh, and they said, well, can I have a look at your channel then? And I said, yes. Uh, and they looked around, and they weren't particularly interested in gaming videos, but this had been something that had just basically come out at that point, um, just a day or two ago. And they decided to watch that, because it looked a bit different. They were they were uh, made curious by the, uh, the start of the title, rather than anything else. And they watched it, and they said that they enjoyed it, and that I uh, should maybe think about doing more if that was something that interested me. Which... I sat on the idea for a while, and I poked around with it, and I decided what I could do. And that's how the story time with Phil actually kind of birthed, in a sense. Because it was a random thing that was never supposed to be a thing. It was never supposed to happen, and it was never supposed to carry on after it did happen. 
but it kind of did purely because one person said that they liked it, which at that point was enough of an, an endorsement for me to decide, okay, this is a success, I can carry on doing it. Um, because at that point I wasn't in I wasn't in a position, well, I said I wasn't in a position, I'm still not in a position to do anything self-indulgent, but I didn't technically want to do anything self-indulgent because I felt like I, I was trying to entertain and self-indulgency doesn't tend to be entertaining. So that's how that's the only reason that it carried on is purely because one person said that it was good which was enough for me to say okay I might as well carry on for at least one more I said if we just do one more and then we'll see how it develops and it did develop it developed into a, a, a weirdness that I'm sorry to keep saying this but I will come back to but anyway <laughs> um, I won't talk about every video but I will talk about the ones that, that kind of matter to me Alberto did matter to me because Alberto was different. It was the first time that I'd ever seen a different type of technology in a game. And I, I'm always interested in game design, how games are made, why games are made. Not on the technical level, not of the, oh yes, you write this level of code and you do this. That's, that goes completely over my head and I'm not interested in it. The design choices of the, what's going through the developer's brain. Why did they decide to do this? Why did they decide to make this area hilly and this area flat? Those are, those are the decisions that interest me, not the technical ones, the creative ones. And Alberto was a perfect example of that because it was an interesting difference in technologies and a different way of playing games that I've ever seen before because it involved the microphone. And there have been many games that have used a microphone. I think the probably most famous one would be Alien Isolation which you had a microphone and it detected the amount of noise you were making and then used that as a beacon to then draw the xenomorph um, towards you. But this was more interesting because that you because that was just how much noise are you making? Okay, they're making 30 decibels of noise, which means the variable is set at 30, which means that the enemy is attracted this much. It's not very interesting. It's not really very complicated or explicit or anything along those lines. And Alberto was different because Alberto used speech recognition for you to actually cast spells by saying them. Which really interested me because that was a really practical thing that it seemed like as much as making noise is something that you would do in real life and would impact your p position in a horror game, that seemed like a very simple way of doing it. This seemed a bit more interesting and this made me a bit more curious. Which is why I really enjoyed that. Another reason I really enjoyed it is because it actually went well. It was one of the videos that I did that I was quite proud of in the sense that nothing really went wrong with it. Oh, sorry, eventually my voice is going to get hoarse. But, um... A space Project and Horror Project. Um... <laughs> this was interesting because... They were very similar games. They were very short games. They were very straightforward games that were made for similar sorts of reasons. And it was such an interesting contrast because not only were they similar in so many ways, I mean, they've even got basically the same name, Space Project and Horror Project. They're basically the same thing, only one of them sets in NASA and the other one's set in a cabin in the woods. And, and it interested me because it was a as many parallels as they had, they were completely different in the sense that you play, or I played Space Project and I thought, this has been made for a joke. This has been made because it's the most ridiculous idea they can come up with, it's silly and it's made for that reason and it's, it's fine for that. And you know, in, in its own way it's cute but it's, it is what it is, but it's nothing special. But then Horror Project was something else entirely, it was a game that was taking itself fully seriously and it wanted to be taken seriously and it was trying its best to do the best job it could of of scaring you and it did I thought a relatively good job of doing that so as similar as those games were they really impressed me in different ways because Space Project impressed me in sense of I can't believe this exists and Horror Project impressed me because I could see the development that was going on excuse me and I could see that 
people were really trying to make something good and really interesting and they were succeeding in that so that was kind of an interesting one for me in its own way um I won't talk much about Papers, Please. I'll talk about that later when we actually get into the proper playlist. Um, Sanctified was interesting as well in the sense that um, it developed the channel in a different way because I can't remember quite what was going on. Um, oh yes, I do remember. It crashed about three quarters of the way through the game. The game crashed and then uh, I was cheesed off by this and I edited the footage that I'd done up to that point and I then decided so that it wouldn't because I was in a bad mood from the crash and because I'd lost all of that progress and I had to go through it all again I decided to take a bit of time sit back relax and then come back to it a little bit later in the day and during that time of relaxing I then started thinking about how different things were working on the channel and having a bit of a reflect at which point I then made a decision which then lasted on the channel forever. And the way that I say that bigs it up for something really important. And as much as it's an um, extremely small thing, it does matter to me. Because previously I've been using a clip-on microphone, which you could see quite regularly. I'd had it clipped onto my lapel. And it was in the middle of Sanctified, and I do mention this in the game, that I then moved over to this which is a microphone stand, which is made of Lego, because I can't afford to make it, I can't afford to buy a proper mic stand, and this seemed a perfect way of getting it at the exact distance that I wanted it, in order to remain comfortable in my chair, while at the same time also producing the best quality audio that I could. And I preferred this because there were so many times when I stood up in order to um, get something, or refill a glass of water or something, and I would basically almost pull the computer over because of course I'd get up and the wire would still be attached to me that was attached to the computer and it was just it was just a pain. It also meant that I couldn't do much bodily movement because any time that I did I um I caused horrible uh, sort of clothing rustly noises which uh picked up on the microphone and I was constantly bumping into the microphone and it was it was a pain. I was trying to get better at it but it was within Sanctified that I then realised the perfect way to change that, which of course was simply to have a microphone stand. And as much as that may seem like the littlest and the most blatantly obvious idea to anybody else, it was still important to me because it, it was a development of the channel and it was me seeing something important. And it was me developing, basically, which, which was nice. This, this is another example of what I was talking about with routine in the sense that it was very little stimulation to me in terms of my comedy, in terms of the stuff that I had to work with because you're just going through the same corridor over and over and over again. Um, but that worked a bit better than routine and I liked it more than I liked how I uh, did my commentary in routine because there I was slightly more familiar with what I should do at that point and I tried more experimental types of comedy, jokes I wouldn't have made any other time in order to try and compensate for the fact that I didn't have much material to work with, in order to just make as many stupid jokes as I possibly could, basically, from the same amount of material, but... Anyway. Oh yeah, and when did that happen? This happened about here, I don't know. We, 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 we won't even talk about the restart of SCP Contempt, which uh, you can see remake, we'll just move swiftly on. Um... Contract Demon. My... What I think, yes, what I'm pretty sure is my favourite um, favorite video that I've ever made on the channel. As much as I, as much as it seems, may seem like a slight contradiction when I say that Contract Demon is my favourite video that I've ever made, while at the same time The Babysitter is my favourite visual novel, that's not to downplay the quality of the writing in Contract Demon or to downplay how much I enjoyed Babysitter. They were both great, and they were great for different reasons, but Contract Demon, again, was random. It was something I downloaded purely because it had a cute image on the front. It was just these two characters that just had a cute design. And I thought, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'll try it, and maybe it'll work, and it'll be maybe it'll be fun. And I had a bad time trying to record stuff that day, as um, as I will come back to with this video in a minute. And I played that at the end of the day, and that was just 
that was exactly what I needed and it was exactly when I needed and it was purely random and that was kind of what made it special to me yes it's got a lovely story and the designs are adorable and the entire story is adorable but at the same time what compounded the adorableness for me was the fact that it was it was almost i mean it sounds weird to say this but it was almost like it knew what i needed and it gave me exactly that at the time but i don't know it was also nice because it quickly became quite popular which meant it overtook um the first video ever did which meant that wasn't the most popular video anymore <laughs> So I was very, very happy about that as well, which kind of did help me decide that that was my favourite video. I will admit that it no longer meant that that was... Because that felt more like, as I was saying at the beginning, you'd imagine a person's most popular video would be them at their best. And I felt like that was a lot closer to me at my best than my first video was, so I was really pleased about that. And I recorded the shadows that were on alongside our car on the same day, uh, as you can see because I'm wearing the same suit, obviously. Um, I recorded that early in the day, and... I recorded it and I sat on it for ages, which is why you can see that three other videos came out before that. And I was actually planning on sitting on it for a lot longer. The only reason that I, um, I, I did upload it at all, I wasn't actually planning on uploading it, and I, I still do to a degree regret it, but I will explain why in a moment, was because of this video, because, which is kind of, I have to kind of explain them both in tandem. The summarized mistending of Shakespeare was a pain even though it was a video that I very much enjoyed making and writing, it was a pain, and it was an important video because it taught me about how file sizes are generated and determined, but it was a pain because it was only 20 minutes long, but it was over 20 gigabytes, in comparison to something like this, which I think was about 18 gigabytes, and that's over twice as much footage, nearly three times as much footage. But because of the visual intensity, because there's loads of mo movement, there's loads of colours, and all of that, um... So that was taking me forever to upload because of my internet being really slow at the time because it was a large file size. So I ended up having to upload this because I needed to push the deadline back by another 24 hours in order to get this up. So that's not to say that this is bad. It just wasn't a good fit for the channel. It wasn't what I liked to do because it was a very... It wasn't a simple story, but it wasn't the most in-depth story. It wasn't the kind of story that I like to showcase. Any other day, any other situation, if it hadn't been for this video, any other time, I would have said that I wouldn't have uploaded that video and I would have just played something else. And I, I, I do have to re-emphasize that's not because the shadows that run alongside our car is bad. It's not bad. It's perfectly good for what it is, it just wasn't a good fit for the channel. Like, I don't know. Dancing with a lamppost is perfectly good for what it is, but it's not something you'd want to see on the channel. I hope. <laughs> so it, it, it was perfectly good for what it was, but at the same time it wasn't what it needed to be. But, but anyway. Oh. Things carried on until until all of this stuff happened. So this day was an interesting day. This couple of days was an interesting day, actually. I think these were back-to-back -back days, actually. Um, this one was the spawn of the Weird Games playlist, as you can see by, again, the abandonment of the standardised uh, title format. I, I was planning on doing a shotgun, and I found a couple of games that looked interesting, but I didn't realise, A, how short they were, and B, how silly they were. And... I played them, and I edited them together, and I realised it was only seven and a half minutes, which of course didn't meet my aim of normally doing 30 to 50 minutes worth of footage a day. So I put it out with something else, I forget what exactly. Um, presumably either this or this, I forget which. But um, it, it was interesting, because when I was playing this, I was thinking this isn't a good fit for the channel, because it's not the right kind of thing. This was a kind of weird inverse of that, and it's what the weird games playlist has always been and what it always will be is it's weird stuff that doesn't fit on the channel but it's so weird that I kind of have to show it to you it's kind of like out of a responsibility that it's so weird and wild that I physically have to show it to you because it's so different it's so it's so strange 
which was sort of compounded by then these because failed recording was of a game that was so ridiculous i felt like i couldn't not show it to you it was so silly not because it was a bad game it's a perfectly good game but again it's not a good fit for the channel and it's not what i wanted to do so it ended up being a, one of the uh the weird games that i play and then again with then the confraternity of toast i have since learned how to pronounce that um which, yes, if you're wondering, I did play up the mispronunciations of that word, but only a bit. <laughs> Not hugely. Um, this was all just, again, another stepping stone for me in realising that sometimes games were so weird that maybe I could actually play them. The games could be good for the channel, they could be not really the right fit for the channel, or they could be somewhere in between where they're so weird and wacky that they are a good fit for the channel. And that's kind of what the weird games playlist turned out to be. The Phantom Showcase really bugs me because um, I don't know where it is. Here it is. It's I didn't realise at the time that one of the games in it had a remake done of it. So I really wish that Midnight Shift, which was a remake of one of the, the first game in this video, I really wish that I put that in there with it because then it would have been a good length and it would have been um, an actual showcase of, of more of that developer's work. So that was just a, that was just a mistake on my part that I didn't look into these things. Uh, but... Never mind. In hindsight, I'm slightly grateful that I played this later because I think if I played this directly after I played that, it would have been a bit of a. I wouldn't have enjoyed it quite as much as I could have, so I'm kind of grateful in that sense that there was a bit of time in between. Oh gosh, what else have we got? I suppose it's time we bit the bullet and talk about Veiled. Oh gosh. Um. Just as I said with other games, I cannot overemphasize enough why I don't like Veiled and why, for the most part, wherever I can, I avoid puzzle horror games or puzzle games in general. It's not because they're bad, it's because they're a bad fit. It's not because they're a bad game, it's because they're a bad fit. And that's what Veiled was. I know I have a bit of a rage at the end and I. I apologise for that, but it was kind of me, uh, that was a tipping point for me to realise that that A, puzzle games weren't a good fit for the channel, B, puzzle games weren't a good fit for me in general, and that C, I needed to learn to quit. I needed to learn that when I was playing a game, if it wasn't working, I needed to stop and say, okay, this isn't going to work, this isn't going to turn into a good video, let's stop wasting our time and do something else which I have since learned to do, and I have since learned to do in many different circumstances. Um, there have been many games that I've downloaded and tried to play, and as it transpired, they weren't really a good game, or a good fit, or whatever the problem with them was, and I would then decide, okay, we had a try, but it didn't work, let's move on. Which is what Veiled ended up being in the end, and in a way it kind of spawned my, my first and last attempt thing, which hasn't gone very far, I'll be more than willing to admit. But uh, I, I somehow get the impression that maybe there's going to be more first and last attempt videos. But, anyway. The Girl in My Dreams was was interesting. Because as much as it was relatively uh, a simple game and a short video, that to anybody else might not seem important, to me it was. Because, again, in the smallest, smallest way, but in a meaningful way to me, it developed me because I developed my editing skills in that video because there was no music in it, there was no background music. So I played, I put in background music, I put in this piece of background music, uh, which you can probably hear being very pl played very, very gently. Um, just so there would be something to listen to other than me. And also because music, if there's a bit of music, it kind of covers up the white noise problem a little bit. It makes it a little bit harder to notice. So, so that game was, was kind of special to me because I developed in that way. And it wasn't long after that, I'm not quite sure when it was, I think it was episode 13 or 14 of Subnautica, when I developed again a little bit more at the same point, because then I had to put text boxes into uh, videos in order to put in little notes, sort of post-recording notes, where I could talk about 
something important and say, you know, this is the reality of the situation. I know I say something here, but I need to correct myself. Which, to anybody else, putting in background music, putting in text boxes, they are really simple. Baby's first steps in terms of video editing. But to me, they were important because it was another step in my development. And this, you know, this channel hasn't ever been, nor will it ever be, just a project for me to learn how to edit videos. You know, this is not the case. I'm here to have fun and I'm here to entertain you, hopefully, at the same time. And it just, it, it makes me happy because I like to have the ability to do what I want to do. I don't like to think, oh, I really want to do something, but then I kind of can't do it because I don't have the skills to do it. Like, like before, before I learned to drive, for example, example, um, you know, I must say, oh, I want to go over there, but I can't because I don't know how to drive, and driving is the only practical way of getting there, which wouldn't then disappoint me. And these two videos, whichever one of the smells because it was, and then this one, were important because they allowed me to do my job better, because I knew that if there was a point that needed some background music, I was now fully capable of doing it. Um, and if there was anything I needed to preface, I could preface it because I could put a text box in. Which, you know, they're simple things, but they meant a lot to me because it meant that I felt better about kind of myself and the job that I'm doing because I now knew that if there was something I needed to do, I could do it. Oh. Should we talk about Afterlife Arcade? I don't know. There's not a lot for me to say. Um, other than it was a bit ridiculous because I... Not the game. The game wasn't ridiculous. Sort of my ethos behind it in the sense that I was playing a first person shooter which is not something I usually play or something I usually enjoy and I thought okay I don't really um, like this per se so let's do this as a first and last attempt because recently we'd had Veiled which had been the same system. So then I <laughs> I said it would be the first and last attempt at which point I then went on to play two more first person shooters that of Hellhunt and then another one which you probably haven't seen yet. Um, I'm not quite sure when that video is going up. It's it's one of the videos I've I've pre-recorded um, for the next week after I I move. Um, so there's a little sort of sneak peek for you, I suppose. But uh, yeah, that 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 one just stands out to me because it it was supposed to be the only time I played a first-person shooter, and it was actually the first of as of yet three times. But I'm not planning on doing any more. How to make a cup of tea was interesting, um, because this was kind of the first time I downloaded a weird game knowing it would be a weird game. I played this and I thought to myself, this is going to be silly, this is going to be crazy and ridiculous and wild. I knew that it would be, right from the get-go, and it was. It was ridiculous. And of course, they would like with Phil, I played it because I, it had my name on it, and how to make a cup of tea, of course, British stereotype, we all drink tea, even though I hate tea. I think it's disgusting. So I thought, oh, you know, it's quite obvious from my accent that uh, I'm evidently a somewhat overtly British character, you might say. So here's a game about making cups of tea. So why don't we have a look at it? Um, and, and it turned into that. So, yeah. <laughs> it was weird, but it was fun. And it was it was interesting. It was it was a bit wild. It was a bit silly, but it was it was what it was, and I, I enjoyed. It. Oh, the bear's black heart. The bear's black heart was the beginning of me doing self indulgent stuff, which I don't do often. I don't like to do often, but I do do occasionally. Like this video, very self indulgent, and the bear's black heart, very self indulgent. Again, like I was saying earlier, with the um, the video that spawned uh, the the uh, I Teach English History video. The Bears Black Heart is another video on YouTube that I love watching and I really enjoy it and I really like it. And it's really fun and it's really cute. And I played it purely because, as I say in it, because I'd seen it before and I was really tired of that day and I just thought, I just, I just stumbled across it. It never crossed my mind that I would ever play that game and I was looking for something else and I saw that and I thought, oh, I didn't think this was here. Let's download this and maybe have a bit of fun with it. Don't know if I'll record it or not, but that one ended up being a bit special to me because of that. Because again, it was random, but it was great, and I I really liked that. 
Horror in the Museum, um, I won't talk much about Avarice because vaguely um, it's a straightforward system, but uh, Horror in the Museum was interesting because that was the only time on the channel up to this point that I've done a, uh, a tech demo. Because that's what Horror in the Museum was. It was a tech demo of a different way of rendering a world. Um, something to do with the negative space. I don't know. I don't understand how how the I don't understand the technology behind it, but it looked weird and interesting, and I, I like looking at different technologies. Like how with the Alberto video, we looked at the different technology for the mi uh, microphone being an interactive part, and um, horror in the museum ended up being the same thing. It, it just it was again almost a bit self indulgent because as much as I like to show off tech demos, because I like to demonstrate new technologies and I like to give them exposure in what minute and microscopic way that I can. I like to show them off because I think they're interesting, uh, particularly good ones like the microphone in Albedo and the different way of rendering stuff in Horror in the Museum. I I thought it was cool, I thought it was interesting and exciting and I really enjoyed it and I liked it. So it was just, you know. Again, it was a bit self-indulgent but it was a, it was a nice thing that it was one of the things that I, I like to do on this channel where I can and that is give things exposure if I possibly can. <laughs> the Communist Doggy Festo was... was weird because much like with How to Make a Cup of Tea but also not quite like How to Make a Cup of Tea because I didn't realise it was a shooter or a walloper I suppose since pretty much at the beginning all you have is melee weapons. I um... I downloaded it because it looked interesting, it looked, it had a strange write-up. I knew it was going to be a bit weird since it's about dogs with increased mental capacity because they've been to space, because you know, that's how that's how astronomy works. But it was, it, it, I was just planning on doing it as a normal a normal game and you know, it, it was supposed to last something like three hours or something, so I thought, oh, maybe it turned into a short series. It didn't, because as I proved with um, Afterlife Arcade, I'm terrible at shooters and general combat games in general, so it just ended up being one of those things that, again, was just too weird to play, but at the same time, too weird to not upload, just like with Tonsil Terror, wherever that's gone. So, that's kind of what happened with that. Two Minute Horror Game Showcase was was also a weird one in the sense that that was a load of random bits and pieces that I'd found and looked interesting but I knew were way too short to put into a video because with a shotgun I try and balance it. I try to have at least no less than a third of the video be dedicated to one game. I don't like it to be sort of 80% one game and then just another tiny game at the end because that doesn't seem fair. I like to give them equal billing, they always should have equal billing so I couldn't do two two minute games, do a four minute video, so it seemed like there wasn't really any way I could bring them onto the channel practically. Until I then thought, why don't I just do a bunch of them in one video and we'll just do some really short snappy stuff and see if I can try that kind of thing. Because everything that I do is basically long form. Even the, like the shortest stuff that I do, it's still longer form in the sense that it's sort of one reoccurring trail of stuff, I suppose. But then this was different, because this was me trying out a new style of humour, where I was doing only a tiny bit of time, a tiny bit of uh, material to work from. What could I do with it? So, again, that was just sort of me experimenting with my own humour a bit to see what kind of stuff would happen. And I think it turned out Disney well. I liked that video. It was, it was kind of a cute one. Oh, gosh. <laughs> shall I talk about this? Yes, I suppose I shall. Um... Doing a trailer for the channel was something that I'd always have in the back of my mind and I never quite knew how to execute the idea. I never knew quite what style I should do it in, what format I should do it in, what I should do with it really. And when I was playing, I don't think it's this episode, I think it's this episode? I can't quite remember, it's, it's one of the episodes of The Forest. I was looking around for some sticks and I started to play it. I started singing, as I do occasionally in videos. Normally I edit it out, sometimes I don't if it's comedic. Um, I just started singing the Home on the Range song. But instead of it being about the different animals and the different circumstances of the range, it was the resources that I was looking for. You know, the sticks that I needed to build a fire, or the, um, or the cave I was looking for, whatever it was I was looking for at the time. 
I did it with that instead, and it was it was a silliness. It was just a random, stupid thing that I did. But when I was then in editing, I was looking back on it, and I was thinking, I was thinking maybe that could be something a little bit more. Maybe I could use that as the trailer, because my idea for the trailer was to demonstrate as much as I possibly could. I wanted to demonstrate every different type of the channel and every different aspect of me, which is why there's horror games, survival games, big games, small games, different stuff. There's loads of different stuff in there that I, I try to showcase everything that I can. I can't showcase everything. I don't think I showcase the um, visual novels, for example, because they don't really fit into the format. But that was kind of a cost I had to accept. And I, I tried to showcase everything that I could, and as much as it isn't a big part of the channel, a big part of me is music and singing. So, to me, singing in the trailer made the most sense to me. Because it showcased part of me. And that's why, as you can see here, in the channel trailer, in the banner here, there's an apostrophe, which there isn't in the channel. And it's supposed to have an apostrophe in it. it. I don't know if I can go and change it, I can't honestly be bothered to change it at this point. Because um, I have to go back to like 135 videos and then probably 145 videos at this point, and then put an apostrophe in all of them, which I can't be bothered to do. But it's supposed to be an apostrophe because it's supposed to be my channel. And as much as it's it's built basically on the backs of other people, in the sense that it's built on the backs of the game developers and it's built on the backs of of you, basically watching the videos. Without those two things, I'm basically nothing. But because of the name of the channel, I knew that the trailer for the channel had to demonstrate who I was. Which is why I tried to demonstrate the different things that I like. Like... Like Guardian Angel and The Forest and Subnautica and the other games that are in there, uh, that are demonstrated in there. The different styles and the different parts of me. Not just different styles of videos, but they're different styles because I'm different in them. Like how in some games I'm serious, and in other games I'm not serious. Sometimes it's very peppy humour, sometimes very childish humour, sometimes it's more sort of thought-out humour, sometimes it's like pre-written humour, sometimes it's slightly pre-written and also slightly improvised humour. It's sort of a... I'm different in different types of videos, and I wanted to showcase very different types of that. So because I was showcasing myself, and because I'd had this idea to do a parody version of Home on the Range, but it would be Home on the Channel, it seemed like sort of a perfect culmination of different things that I could do in order to then also create the trailer. Which, I'm proud of this, because again, as I said previously, it helped me develop my editing skills, and it also helped me develop my sort of writing skills as well. Because in a game, I just get into it and I see what happens, but with this, obviously I couldn't do that. You couldn't get into a production of a trailer, you have to plan it out, you have to think about it, you have to write it, you have to criticize it and think is this going to work is this going to be practical is it going to be fun is it actually going to produce a good product and you have to ask yourself all those complicated questions which was a different sort of development for me yes it taught me a bit about editing in terms of collecting stuff but it was you know it was it taught me a lot and it was really fun to make well actually no it wasn't fun to make it was a royal pain to make because I was constantly redrafting it, and I do a load of work on getting something to, getting something formed, only for me to then decide that it actually wasn't going to work, and I had to throw it out the window and start all over again, which wasn't much fun. But by the end of it, I was actually really proud of it. And I know my voice isn't quite in the best place. I could do a better performance of that, um, even though my performance in it. Well, I say my performance. The singing in it is actually the third um, take of me trying to do it. Um, me sort of seeing problems and improving on it each time, but you get the idea. I think I've talked about that more than enough at this point. Um, oh, where should we go next? Where shall we go next? There's a lot of series going on at the minute, isn't there, at this sort of point? Oh, I see, we've nearly got to the end. Um, that would explain why all of this stuff looks so familiar, then. Um, what else can we talk about? I can talk about this. This was an interesting little parallel of different things. Um, much like I was talking about the Space Project and Horror Project, this was something similar in the sense that Desolatium was a really... A sort of a good, 
interesting, meaty sort of game that had lots of potential, lots of intrigue, and then Get Spooked is just the most ridiculous thing in the history of the universe, in a good way. And I won't talk about Get Spooked much, just in case, um, in case you haven't seen it and you, and one day you go on to see it, wherever, whenever. I don't want to spoil any of that, but it's just ridiculous. And it was lovely seeing that contrast in it because, as much as I can switch styles of humor in between videos. You know, I can do one video and do one style of humour, and then I can do another video and do a different style of humour. But they're probably going to be on different days, or at least one of them will be early in the day, and another one will be later in the day, or whatever. But this was different, because I recorded these back to back, pretty much, I think. I might have, I might have got get spooked after Desolatium and been looking for something else, I can't quite remember. Um, but I recorded them very close together, so I had to shift gears completely, basically in the middle of recording, which it was never something I'd done before, but it was interesting to kind of experience that within myself, I suppose, in a, in a weird sort of way. Sort the court. This, again, exactly, the, pretty much exactly the same as, as, as the Bear's Black Heart, exactly as I said at the beginning, so I won't talk about it much, but... I cannot express how wonderful Sort the Court is in in every conceivable, every every way that I can possibly think of a game, I think of Sort the Court positively. Yeah, I have good memories of watching it on YouTube in the past, and I have a good, very good memory of playing it. And it was special to me, and I really, really enjoyed it, and I really loved it. It was a really special thing to me, and I'll always love Sort the Court for that, because it's a really special and important thing to me. Lonely Things isn't really interesting to talk about in, in any sort of wild way, it's just a basic standalone. Um, it's a good game, but there's nothing really sort of shocking to talk about in terms of the, how it relates to the channel. The only thing that I will say is that, although it went up quite recently, I recorded it about a month ago. <laughs> I recorded it about a month ago and it had an enormous file size and it had... There was loads of other stuff I needed to do at the time on the channel, so I kept delaying it. I said, oh, we'll do Lonely Things later, we'll upload it later. And then when I finally did get it upload uploaded, it was about a week after I'd recorded it, which is much later than I usually upload things. And then, after that, I then kept delaying it again. Because it was like, oh, you know, um, oh, the forest has restarted, I, I want to do that first. Or, oh, I've got a comedy, I, I, I want to get that out next. Or, I want to complete this, uh, this series, where it's on, I haven't got a clue where that series ends, but you get the idea. There was loads of different stuff that I wanted to do, so it kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed for about three weeks. So this video was recorded ages ago, but you, people can only see it now, which has never happened on the channel before and hopefully won't happen again because it was a bit of a mess, but... Oh. Excuse me. Oh, man. Is there anything else I really could or should talk about on here. Um, there's one thing I'd like to reiterate about this game. Um, in the sense that I realised before I downloaded it, I realised as I was playing it, and I realised later in editing and post, I realised that as much as this game is a bit silly, at the same time, it is addressing a very serious topic. Not the whole communism capitalism thing, but um, other stuff. And I I tried an experimental balance with it, because with sober games like this and the other ones, I treat them extremely seriously, I take them completely seriously, and I try to pay them the greatest respect. This, I could see, because it was communism, capitalism, silliness with box people, I knew that it wasn't the same, it wasn't trying to give a message about anything, or anything along those lines, it wasn't trying to do anything other than just be a silly game, which was fine. So I was trying to do with it something that I hadn't done before, I tried to experiment with it, and I tried to do something a bit silly, with a serious topic, in the sense that I took the serious topic, I moulded it into something far beyond what it ever had been, I reshaped it 
into something that was completely different from where it began. Like with the mistelling of Shakespeare, when I take the story of Romeo and Juliet, and I take it from a story about loyalty and love and sacrifice and responsibility, and I turn it into a ridiculous story about miscommunications, stupid motivations, and, and, and meatballs. I sometimes take something normal or serious and I try to turn it into something completely different but comedic which is what I was experimenting with doing with this one as best I could which is why I take the whole thing into it being like a, an uprising of a of a subjugated race of box people and it's it's very it's it's different style of anything else I've ever done, and it's probably a different style to anything else I will ever do in the future. I don't know if I will ever use that style again. It entirely depends on the game, um, but it's it was an experiment. I don't know if it worked or not. I don't know if people like it. I don't know if people ever will like it because you know I'm saying things that may not make a lot of sense right now. So you might look at this and say, "What are you talking about? People don't like it. Only two people have ever viewed it." Yes, I completely agree with you and I know what you mean, but I'm not doing most of this video for today and for today's audience, if any of the audience, any of the audience, any of you are actually interested in hearing any of this. As I said before, I'm doing this partly for myself to sort of clear the air a bit, partly because of one day in the future I may wish to look back on this moment in my life, and also because there's also a chance that possibly later in the channel's life it might develop to a point and people might want to hear my thoughts about this part of the channel's life. I don't know. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, maybe I'm blowing things out of proportion, maybe I'm sounding egotistical and narcissistic when I say all of those things. But I've been going for an hour and a half now, so hopefully anybody that's that would think anything of that is not here anymore. And if you are still here after an hour and a half, my word, you're dedicated to your job. But you get the idea. You you do get the idea. Um Um so that's 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 all that, that is, and that's all that need be said about that. I think. So let me talk a little bit about some stuff in general. I suppose we should sort of bite the bullet a bit and talk about um, this to an extent. Um, man, this looks boring with the same thumbnail as thirteen times over. And again, I, I uh, exactly what I was saying a moment ago. Um, as much as right now, nobody may be interested in why auction not included ended and never restarted. Maybe one day people will be interested. So this is just sort of me preparing for that eventuality, I suppose, is what I'm kind of trying to say. So, um... If you remember a while ago when I was talking about how I, c I space out the recordings of games to prevent myself from getting burned out, this was different, because as much as I was doing that, my voice is getting really hoarse, I'm going to have to get some water, excuse me for 10 seconds. I told you it'd be quicker now. Oh, the joys of living in a, what used to be a dentist surgery. It's a long story for a different day. We've got enough long stories being told today. Um... At the end, uh, where was I? Oh yeah. Auction not included was different because, as much as I was spacing the episodes out, I'd get to the end of the video, I'd be burned out, I wouldn't enjoy editing it, and then I'd get back into it in a few days later, and I'd, I'd feel fine when I was starting it up, and then the moment I got back into it, I would look at the situation, and I would immediately feel burned out and miserable again, and that slowly began. To manifest itself. It was fine for a while. It was fine until about, I don't know, around about this sort of point, I think, roughly then. I'm not quite sure when. Things were okay and things were fine up until that point. And then I started to get burned out, possibly because for a good long time, actually not included was, with the exception of Subnautica, the longest running series. It, it was the second video that had ever been posted on the channel. It had gone on forever. It had existed as long as the channel had. And in Subnautica, things developed and changed, we went new places, we made new things, and it was all very exciting and different each, each time. But with Auction Not Included, it was always the same thing. It was go back into the same colony and fight the same problems 
over and over and over again and never feel like you were making any progress, feel like all you were doing was de delaying the inevitable. And when I say you, I mean me at this point. <laughs> I don't know why my communication is so weird, but... I then got to part 12 and I thought, okay, I have identified the fact that I'm getting burned out even even before I've even gotten into the game properly. And I decided to take a break from it. And I did. I took about three weeks off from it, I thought. And I thought, when I got back into it, it would be fine again. And for the shortest time it was, for about the first ten minutes of that video, it was fine. And everything was fine. But then, it burned me out again, really quickly. And I realised that if even taking a few weeks away from a series, instead of a few days away, I was still feeling just as burned out by the end of it. I realised that had to be it. And I might one day return to Watch Tonight Included, but... And it's not a reflection on the game, it's a reflection on me. Because what any reasonable person would have done is said, okay, this colony isn't working because we've made baby mistakes at the beginning of it and we need to go back to the beginning start again that's what a reasonable person would have done but I didn't because by episodes sort of 11 and 12 of this I had kind of gotten over to a small extent my tendency to give up on things and I didn't want to give up on it because it felt like I'd be sort of dipping back into that old habit of saying, oh, well, it doesn't matter, we'll just do something else. Rather than try to commit to this and make it work. And I tried, I tried so hard to make this work. I tried different things and I tried thinking for ages to dream up new ideas to make it work. And, and I, I, at the end of part 13, I say I will start a new colony and the series will continue again. And then it never did. As you can see here, it says last updated the 5th of August, which was like six weeks ago. It never came back. I said that it would come back, and then it never did. I, knew, I didn't even write final in the title, and it just never came back. Ever. Or well, at least up to this point, it hasn't come back. So, I am saddened by that in a way, but in a way I'm also kind of glad, because I, as much as I'm disappointed that we couldn't win, not that they really, I don't even know if there is a win scenario when Oxygen not included, or whether it's literally just a matter of survive as long as you can. Um, at the same time, I'm glad that I did it, because again, as I was saying previously, I do need to quit some things. Sometimes I have to admit that as much as I don't like to quit something, I don't like to give up on something, I have to admit that some things have to stop and some things have to be finished. Even if they're not complete, they have to be finished. So for the time being, that is how Auction Not Included is going to have to stay. Unfinished, but finished. Finished with me, but not unfinished. But not, you know what I mean. That's, that's what Auction Not Included was. I don't have much to say on Papers, Please, so I will be brief. Um, Papers, Please was weird, because Papers, Please was something that I had seen somebody else play quite extensively, and because it's quite a story-based game, I was worried. I didn't know if it was going to work on the channel, because I'd seen it done previously. As you might possibly notice, I use somebody else's pronunciations of all the strange uh, localised names, because, again, I'm bad at the pronunciation, so I thought instead of trying to pretend like I hadn't heard them before and invent my own pronunciations, which would probably be horribly confusing and I'd muck, they'd muck it all up, I thought, let's just make it simpler and just use the other pronunciations and just see if it works. And it did. It was it was fun. It's it's a game that I really enjoy playing. I mucked it up a bit because I always played them in double sessions. I always did two episodes at one. But that meant that I would play a game, I'd play a part, like I'd play part three, and then that'd go up in like a few days. But I'd also play part four, and then that'd go up in a few more days. Which means it would probably be about a week between sessions. And if you know anything about Papers, Please, you'll know that it's a game that requires a lot of skill that you build up over time and you don't want to lose. So I made the problem that I'd record two episodes, wait a week, lose all my skill, record two episodes, wait a week, record two episodes. Which ended up not working as well as it possibly could have, I suppose. 
Oh dear, what else should we talk about? Um, I don't see that there's much to talk about really with the Unity remake of SCP other than what we've already said. Other than the way that it uh, restarted. The thing that I probably didn't say at the end, I don't remember, it was so long ago, uh, that I may one day return to it. Uh, when there are more updates, when there's more SCPs, when there's more being done with it. Because at the moment it just feels like a reskinning. Of, it feels like a cut down version of the original with reskinning on it. It doesn't feel like it's trying to do anything new or anything different with it or shake up the formula at all. It's got some new SCPs in there, don't get me wrong, that, that were not in the original. But it, And it is taking some differences from it, which I like. It's not just a mod that changes the uh, visual appeal of the game. But I don't feel like at the moment they're really doing enough with it in term to, to, for it to be a good fit on the channel. I've also just realised there's a stray apostrophe in there, which is going to bug me. I have to go back and change that later. Anyway, um, that's not to say, again, that, it, it, that the Unity remake is bad. It's that they're doing it for a particular reason, and I don't think that reason is a good fit for the channel. It's probably a good reason, but it's not the kind of reason that I think fits well on the channel. So, I suppose we should talk about these. I've talked about the beginning of them, obviously, um, which I won't go into more details of that. Um, I will talk about how it was interesting with the whole file size thing, because this was very short, but again, full 3D game. I'm playing it in, obviously, 1080p. Um, so it's a relatively visually active game. I'm wandering around Fallout New Vegas. I'm wandering around the Big MT, and I'm doing stuff while I talk. And then again, the same thing here. I'm doing some very visually active things. And it was these two videos, probably more than any other, along with some Nodsko in general, that taught me about what makes video file sizes larger or smaller. Which is why since then, I have played this game for them. Because it's a good balance of two things. It's visually interesting, which video needs to be, in my opinion, while at the same time, it's also not so intensive that I can't concentrate on it. Because in this one, particularly, um, I'm good at the Arkham Combat. I'm better at the Arkham Combat than I actually am in this uh, video, because of course I'm distracted because I'm trying to tell you the story of Romeo and Juliet in a comedic way at the same time. So this was a problem because this, the game got in the way of me trying to tell you it. I was being interrupted, I was having problems with it, and I couldn't tell you the story properly. Which is why this game then became the perfect option for me, because this was relaxed enough, while interesting enough, that I had plenty of time to work on my telling of jokes and stories, while at the same time giving you something visually interesting to look at. So, I suppose the only other thing really to say is how they kind of changed, in the sense that this was completely improvised, as I said earlier. This I defined the topics of. I knew which relationships they talk about and what sort of takeaway I was going to have from each one, but that was it. How I was going to make them funny, I left to the improvisation part. This was the least improvised one that I had because I actually had a script for this, pretty much. I basically read off a script and I embellished it occasionally, or I took parts out on the fly where I thought would be more comedically entertaining. So this was the most scripted one. And then these all became a sort of blend of the two, really, in the sense that I would do research either in my own brain or online in order to find um, good stories that I could use in the videos that um, I would then write down the story to get all the details that I wanted. And while I was doing that, I'd be thinking, are there any jokes I can make here or there or anything like that, which I would use as sort of jumping off points. So in these ones, I would go into the story, or the sport, or whatever it was, and I would think, okay, so I can make these couple of jokes, but then as I'm going along, I'll also be improvising more jokes on top of those, which kind of, you know, added to that in a little way. And in general, as much as this is a really off-the-wall thing for what is primarily a gaming channel, I'm kind of proud of what these are in a sense. I, they're not great. They're not the funniest things in the history of the universe. They're not professional. They're not great. But at the same time, they mean a lot to me in a, in a weird sort of little way because they demonstrate different parts of me and there's something that spawned out of nothing, which to me is always special. Something that spawns out of nothing is always special to me. 
like the visual novels and the babysitter and the uh, contract demon and all the rest of it. If something spawns out of nothing, it's special to me. I don't know why, it just is. Like, I've never understood why that is, but that's always the thing with me, that something is only truly, really special to me if it's just been random. Like this jacket. I love this jacket. This jacket is fantastic. It's ridiculous and I love it, but I stumbled across it while I think I was looking for a belt. I was looking for a belt and I found this. So this is just just one more example of how something can develop out of nothing but end up being really important to me, which, I don't know. Maybe that makes sense, maybe it doesn't, but it, it means something to me. It means something to me. So, um, I suppose the next wise stop would be here. Oh look, you get another little sneak peek. Oh, something which hasn't come out yet. Um, there's a particular reasoning behind the Sober Games. There's a there's an infrequency to them and there's a seriousness to them because they're they're obviously on you know varying different topics we've got you know, PTSD and the horrors of war we have schizophrenia which have this one which doesn't really it isn't really a sober game but it doesn't fit anywhere else on the channel any better so I felt like this was a fair place to put it and sort of my style within it best reflects a sober game rather than anything else there's this one, which is a rather mixed bag of self-harm, intrusive thoughts, depression, and a lot of other things. Um, and then the more frequent ones of anxiety uh, and depression, and then... I'm hesitant to talk about this one too much, because it hasn't come out yet, but chances are that you're watching this after it has come out, so... They matter to me, because... When I play them... I learn. Like, I've had my brushes with various different parts of this. I won't talk about which ones specifically, but I've had my brushes with various different bits of the things that I've done here. So sometimes I'm playing them and I'm thinking, does this reflect my experience? And what does that mean? And other times I think, I'm learning. Like, I don't know anything about what it's like to be a soldier. I don't know what it's like to live through a war. I don't know what it's like to try and adapt to living in a normal society again after you've been through a war. I, I have no idea of that, and I couldn't begin to comprehend that, but I respect that that is a very difficult thing that happens in people. And upon playing We Shall Remember, I felt like I'd learned a little bit of additional understanding for that. Only a tiny bit. Like a, like a, a 20 minute experience in a game can never, ever begin to comprehend and compare to the reality of the situation but it just gives me that little that little opening of the door it doesn't fling the door open and chuck you in but it does open it just a crack just that you can get a tiny element of understanding out of it and i play these partly for my benefit in that sense and partly also for hopefully other people's benefit because for any number of different reasons, a person might interact with somebody that has PTSD or anxiety or anything else, and they might find it difficult to uh, fully understand them. And I find it difficult. You know, I'm not fully versed in all of these topics, and I'm not fully experienced in all of these topics, so I find it, I find it difficult to understand what I should do and what I should think in some of these situations. So I find that learning about these topics is a very important and useful thing for me. So I then find that maybe if we do them on the channel, occasionally, maybe then somebody else will watch them and somebody else will be benefited from that a little bit. Somebody will think, oh, I've got a friend with anxiety. Maybe, maybe I'll learn something from, from Adventures in Anxiety and then maybe they watch it and they, they do learn a tiny bit and that makes them a little bit happier and a little bit more able to to do the things they need and want to do which might seem a bit grandiose and like oh I'm educating the entirety of society to, to work better and more cohesively and all of that rubbish that's not what I'm trying to do 
I mean, it is and it isn't. I'm not trying to do it to that extent. I'm not trying to do it for that reason. I'm not trying to do it because it's anything grandiose or because I'm trying to do anything special. I'm just trying to help out in my own little tiny way because... These are big problems that exist in the world, and gladly they're being addressed more and more as time goes by, and they're more and more progress towards solutions is being developed. But I like to think that maybe, even if it's just one person, one person, to the tiniest of extents, if they can benefit from one of these videos, then I'm happy with the entire experience. The entire Sober Games system that we've got on the channel, I am happy with if that is what has happened. If somebody has benefited from it, somebody has got a little bit more understanding, they're a little bit more comfortable, they're a little bit happier, or or, or, or not just people who, who know people with these problems, if, if, like me, they've experienced the problem themselves, to whatever extent, be it a large extent or a small extent, they maybe can look at this and think it kind of helps them sort of rationalise and justify what's going on in their life and they can say yes this is a real thing and maybe this isn't my fault and maybe this is a thing that happens to other people as well i don't know but if it can help one person at some time in their life on the tiniest tiniest degree then i am proud of the entire system that the sober games have always been and that's that's the reason I do them. That's the reason why they'll always be a part of the channel. Um, they're a very irregular part. I never go out looking for them and think, oh, we'll play a server game today. I just bump into them. I'm, I'm scrolling through looking for other games, and I find one of them, and I think, ah, oh, maybe we can learn something today. And I always learn something from them. I've learned a lot from all of these. Um, this one less so, but we won't get into that. Um... That's a, that's a very complicated, very uh, complex story that I don't really have the time for today. So, I hope that explains the server games, why they're here, even though they may seem a bit off the wall, what they're doing here, and why they matter to me. Not just because I'm trying to demonstrate a different style of my personality or anything like that. They have a meaning to me, and they have a value and an importance to me, and they're kind of there for that reason, if that makes any sense. Um, what else? Um, was there anything in here we didn't really talk about? Um, oh, I'm showing you more things that you possibly have or haven't seen yet, or not, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I need to talk about, really. I suppose we could talk, well, I'll talk a little bit about the forest. There's not much I want to say on the forest. Um, the thing that I will say is that the first two parts were interesting to me because normally in a game I have to work quite hard for my humour. I, I do my best to to think things out and make things fun and interesting. Oh, excuse me, I do apologise. I don't know what I've had today. Um, I try to work hard on my humour and I try to make a real effort for it. But the first two episodes of The Forest were interesting because they... it was different. I didn't have to work hard, it came very naturally to me, which confused me because they were long videos and I wasn't doing a lot, I was just sort of wandering around, exploring the world, interacting with a few enemies, picking up some resources and wandering around beaches and stuff. I wasn't doing anything monumental, but all of the humour and the commentary came very naturally to me. And it seemed very just... Like, I just played the game and it all flowed out of me. And that was a sort of a weird oddity in me. And I kind of really liked that for that reason. And I put off playing The Forest for the longest time. I got it in the Steam Summer Sale. Because it was dirt, dirt cheap. And I'd been thinking about playing it a little bit. I never planned on doing a full series of it. Never thought I'd get to the end of it. Um, I never even intended on bothering with the story at one point. I just wanted to get in and explore the world a little bit. Um, but that was that was a that was a weirdness for me, and it ended up being a roller coaster because it started off really well. Then the combat picked up, and the difficulty started increasing, and I started getting a bit cheesed off. Then things kind of went back up a little bit, and things improved to an extent. Then I gave up completely. And then I did one of the things that I'm quite proud of on the channel, 
that I just dedicated an entire, well, entire afternoon and an evening, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. in terms of recording, and about 10 p.m. to about 4 in the morning editing. I don't know why I didn't just go to bed, but um, to to come back into the game and to beat it, to defeat it and to end it. Because as I said, I hate quitting things these days. Previously it was just an accepted part of my life, you know. Oh, if something isn't working, just quit and move on to something else. But by the point that I'd done part 6 of the forest, I, I had started hating that part of my past self. And I decided, okay, that's it. I'm not, I'm gonna do my absolute utmost to prevent that from happening again. And Again, it was something that developed out of nothing, because I was sitting there, waiting for a video to export, and I just thought, I've got 10 minutes, I'll just go online, and I'll just look up how, like, strategies to get to the bottom of the sinkhole, because I knew getting to the bottom of the sinkhole was an important part of the story. So I thought, okay, we'll just look up a strategy for that, and I thought, oh, we'll need this thing, so I'll look up that as well, and I then developed a whole plan. And then I got into it and thought, okay, we'll just play a bit, maybe we'll just try and make a little bit of progress. And then it all sort of snowballed into me making more progress and more progress until the point where I got all the way to the end of the game. And I was on such a roll that I then carried on editing into the wee small hours of the morning. And even beyond that, even though I hadn't planned on when videos would end, I wasn't thinking, okay, I'll get to this point and then I'll stop, and I'll get to that point and then I'll stop, which is why the outros that's why the outro for 7, the intro for 10, and the outro and intro for 8 and 9 are recorded in post. They're me doing editing uh, recording them. Um, and the fact that as sort of shoddy as that seemed, that we got four episodes, which is more than I was expecting, we got all the way to the end of the game, I did it all in one session, I was proud of what I did and what I'd gotten to, and they all turned out to be roughly the same length and roughly the same quality. It wasn't like, oh, this is a really bad episode, but I have to show it because I have to show the progression of the story. And, oh, this was a really good episode. There was a really good humour here. But then it's like ten minutes of progress, loads of good humour, but nothing interesting in the game is happening. And oh, then at the end, some more story stuff happens. None of it was like that. It was all just a nice, constant, steady... St it was a pain to edit, don't get me wrong, because it was millions of different videos, because I cut it up into little pieces to cut out all of the farming and stuff, and all of the respawning and such like. And... As much as it was a pain, as much as it took all day, in the end it turned out to be something really, really good that I'm really proud of, and I'm really glad that we got to the end of it, because that's, that much was special to me in a way. But... I don't know. Um... Is there anything else I want to talk about? I won't really talk about Polymerica and Empty Head, um, because they're sort of very short for the sake of it. Um, they're just sort of there for the sake of them all being in one place if you want to see that series. Um, and a tiny, tiny note on the end of Polymerica. I still have the greatest respect for the game and the game developer. But... As I've said with other things, it was, it never was, it never would be a good fit for the channel. And I know I get a bit into it at the end, like the last 10 minutes of this video is just me ranting about stuff. As much as I kind of get into it a bit and I try to sort of bite into the game somewhat, and I end up do doing that a bit. Um, at the same time, I... I I just want to re-emphasize the fact that it's a good game. It just isn't a good fit. And that's one of the things I want to explain about the shotgun. I realized a while ago that the shotgun might seem repetitive in a certain aspect. Because at the end of every game, I take two minutes and I have a thought about the game. And I talk about it. I talk about what about it I liked, what about it I didn't, and those sorts of different things. And I realised recently, having already done now 17 shotguns, I realised that I was often saying the same things. I was often saying, oh, it's got a nice art style, the designs of the enemies are nice, the pacing is good, the story's interesting, and all of that stuff. And I realised, I thought to myself, why is that? Why am I always saying the same things? 
and I thought, what are other people going to think of the fact that I'm saying the same thing? Is it going to seem like it's disingenuous? Is it going to seem like I'm just talking about the same stuff and saying, oh yeah, this is good because, you know, I'm just saying that it's good rather than it being my honest opinion? And I was starting to question myself and think, is it actually my honest opinion or am I just saying it because I always have said it? At which point I then realised that I'm saying positive things about the game because those are the only ones I actually publish. And it suddenly struck me that I had done shotguns where I hadn't been positive. And I said, no, I don't actually enjoy this game. It wasn't fun. And I suddenly realised the reason it seems so repetitive is because the bad stuff and the negative comments don't get uploaded. Because if it's a bad game, there's no point in showing it to you. And then you can see that with things like Veiled and my rants in Polymercum, all the rest of it. If there's ever a game that's not a good fit for the channel, the chances are I won't upload it. In things like Veiled, I don't really know why I uploaded it, but I did. In Polymer Coon, we were too invested at that point to ever back out. And with my rants about the forest, exactly the same system. But with things where it's just a bad fit, chances are I just won't upload it. Which is kind of a shame because that, that, that never kind of demonstrates my... At the times when I have respect for a game, but I won't bring it onto the channel. Because of course, stuff I don't bring onto the channel, you never see. Which is one of the reasons I wanted to make this video. Because I wanted to talk about stuff that I can't put on the channel in any other way. Things that I've talked about here, explanations that I've given, and things that I've said. Things I can't say anywhere else, because it wouldn't be practical. I can say them here, and I can... We can all... Well, we can all... Those who are interested, and those who have survived the last two hours of me yakking, they can benefit, we can benefit from, I don't know, this stuff that I'm talking I don't know. As you can see, it's getting a bit late, and I've been talking for two hours straight, so naturally I'm a little bit whacked. But, um, I hope that all of the stuff I'm saying makes sense, and I hope the reasons that I'm saying it makes sense, because beyond the things that I'm actually saying, if you understand the reason that I'm saying them, that matters slightly more to me. But, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? Um, anything in the visual novels? Has my internet crashed again? No, it hasn't. That's good. Uh... I don't think so. Beyond reiterating a couple of different points, like the fact that this is really good, the fact that this is genuinely really, really good, I was really impressed by this one. Um, I don't think there's much to say on the visual novels. I think they speak for themselves. I know some people disagree with the concept of doing visual novels on YouTube, and I understand their points. Absolutely, I do. I understand and I respect the argument that they make in that regard, but... I'm not really here to address that tonight, um, but I think that that is about uh, it, mostly. I probably should have just gone back to this tab, shouldn't I? Should I just do that? I don't know. Um, I suppose literally the, 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 the one other thing I want to say, if this is going to seem like the most boring thing in the history of the universe, but if you've got through the past two hours and didn't think it was boring, you're probably not going to think this is boring either. I want to take a, like ten seconds just to talk about why I have these different bars of different videos. Why I have basic uploads, popular uploads, I yeah, basically just have this here because everybody else does really. So it's kind of... As much as I don't like herd mentality on YouTube, and somehow I have managed to resist having rants about different problems on YouTube. Which is nice. I'm glad that I've managed to do that and I've kept the focus on the channel rather than branching out to other stuff. But um, I don't really like that mentality, but never mind. Um, the reason that I have the comedies, the shotguns, the novels, the sober games and the weird games. And I'm soon going to be having my favourite games up here as well as I'm going to uh, make a little playlist of my favourite videos that I've made. About It won't be much, just sort of ten videos that I... The ones that I've liked, the ones that I've enjoyed the most, and the ones that have meant the most to me. Um, these are here to demonstrate my different styles. Like, this is my improvisation and writing in comedy. This is my random stuff is going to happen and we're going to have to deal with it. This is my storytelling side. This is my serious side. This is my utterly ridiculous side. 
these are the different extremes of my personality and again coming back to what I was saying earlier the name of the channel matters to me because it's it's as much as it's a source of what I hope is a source of entertainment for you at the same time it's an option for me to explore and also for me to almost it's almost like a little autobiography for me because it shows off the different parts of me because yes sometimes I purely improvise stupid stuff sometimes I predetermine stupid stuff Life is often random, I ha and you know we all have to deal with the randomness of life, and we, we you know we try to cope with it as best we can. And I try, you know, this probably seems weird to say that, but I feel like that's demonstrated a tiny bit here. Maybe it's just because I'm really tired because I've yacked for two hours and five minutes. The visual novels are my love of telling stories. The sober games is how I can be a bit more serious when the subject requires it. The weird games is m the weird side of my personality, me being utterly ridiculous. And further with my, my playlist of liked videos, which I sometimes seems to be public, sometimes seems to be private. I don't understand what that is, but that's basically another little option for you to see another side of my personality. In terms of a little bit more of me. And that's that's kind of what the channel is to me. It's just me. It's my name, and vast majority of the time it's my face. So, for me, it's just... It's me. The channel is built on your back. The backs of the people who make the games and the backs of the people who view the game, view the videos, watch the videos and enjoy the videos. But I'm kind of the catalyst, I suppose, in a small way. I don't know why, but that, that doesn't sound right to say that, but you get my idea. I don't want this to seem self-centered and egotistical. To be honest with you, making a two and a half, two hour video about me just talking about my own channel in general, probably especially since it's been going four months, probably does seem horribly egotistical. But at the same time, I want it to be obvious that I started this channel because I wanted to explore what I could do and what it what would develop from me and that's kind of where we're at now and I'm really happy with where we're at now because there there have been bad times there have been times where I hated the channel there have been times when I hated making videos I didn't want to do them I'd lost all motivation I was in a nasty nasty place and I really really didn't want to be doing it but I powered through and I kept going and currently I'm at a really good part. I'm at a really good place now in terms of the channel. Don't worry about the rest of me but this stuff matters to me because this is me in a str in its in its own strange silly wild wacky way this is me. And, and, <laughs> there's a tiny moth trying to interrupt my stupid rant. It just, I'm just pleased with where the channel is. Because when the channel's in a good place, I feel like I'm in a good place. Because if the channel is me, the channel is an archive of me. And it's a demonstration of me, it's an explanation of me, it's almost an autobiography of me. Or at least of a small section of my life. And I know I'm talking like the channel is going to end. And I know I said I wouldn't talk about the future of the channel. The one thing I will say about the future of the channel is that I have no plans on ending it. Okay? It's not going to die. I have no intention of ever stopping making... St I have no intention of ever stopping making videos. But... When the channel's in a good place, I feel like I'm in a good place. Because in a way I kind of feel intertwined with the channel because it's been such a big part of my life over the past four months it's kind of become its own thing and as much as it as I've said before as much as it's built on other people's backs and as much as it's dependent on other people it's still in a way a little bit me because any 
anybody else could do this. Anybody else could read visual novels. Anybody else could do comedies. Anybody else could play these games. And anybody else could have the same audience that I do. But this just... It could be anyone else. But it was me. And... Again, I'm not trying to sound egotistical, but... That matters to me. And this matters to me, because this is special to me. This matters. I don't really know why. I don't know if it will last. I don't know how things are going to change, because... Looking at the place I'm in today, making this video, in comparison to the place I was when I was making this video, or when I was making... Wherever it's gone... This... When you compare where I was with those two videos to where I am now, I'm so proud of the development that's happened, how the channel has gotten better, and how it's developed from different sources and for different reasons, in different ways, different paces, different stuff. I'm just proud. I'm really proud of this because for a while, I thought the channel would basically die today. I thought that I was going to make this video, and then that would be it. And I wouldn't do any more, and that this would have just been a fun thing to do over the summer, and then that would be the end of it. That was at a point when I was really low motivation, I was not having a good time with videos and the channel in general, and I wasn't having fun. And I wasn't happy. But it's not like that anymore. I'm now at a point where I'm sad, but I'm sad for a good reason. I'm not sad because things are being a pain, I'm sad because the channel is going to have to change, and it's going to have to be different now. Not forever, and not in an enormous way. Hopefully quality will remain the same, but quantity would be the only thing that differs, in order to prioritise other things. But I'm just a bit sad because... Something that I am so proud of, even though it's basically meaningless to everybody else, certainly today, it matters to me, because I'm proud of it. I'm proud of what it's done. I'm proud of where it's gotten. I'm proud of what it is. And I'm sad that it now has to change. It's not going to change hugely, but it is going to change. And, you know, change always comes and change always has to be accepted, like how my voice is changing to a horribly hoarse one. <laughs> Sorry, I also saw something in my glass. Um, change always comes, you have to always adapt to change, you have to accept it and live with it. But... I suppose the reason that I'm sad is because I see less potential now. When I'm only making half as many videos, or possibly even less as I normally would, I see half as much opportunity for development. You know, if I play seven games in a week, there's seven chances for me to learn and develop and grow. Whether it's me learning about a, a mental illness, or me hearing a, a cute story, or laughing my socks off over a silliness, or not giving up on something. Or, or working something together, or or preventing myself from being defeated, or writing a comedy and finding a silly story on the internet. Whatever it is, there's always so much chance, and that's why I love it at the minute. Because I look forward to new videos and new games, and I think, what adventures will these hold? What new excitingnesses will be here for us to explore today? What will they be? I can't wait to find out. And now I turn on the recording and I'm... I'm pleased to do that. I'm pleased that I can entertain a few folks. Because that's the only thing in life that matters to me, is making people happy. And... I'm pleased that I can just... Be okay with what I am and who I am. And what I do. And that's what this channel is to me. And it's... The last four months have been a heck of an adventure. And I don't know what the next few months are going to be like. I don't know what the rest of the year is going to look like. Things are going to change a lot. Um, 
as time goes by because my life will change and I don't know how that's going to impact the channel but I will always as ever I will always communicate to you as best I can as much I can but I think that um, that is everything that I needed to say everything that I wanted to say and everything that I could say so if you've sat through the entire two hours and fifteen minutes of this especially in one sitting the only thing I can say to you the only two things I can say to you are congratulations because you're you have more endurance than I do and thank you because the chances are if if you're watching this video then the channel will probably mean something to you because somebody that just pops in to see a bit of entertainment and move on is all is great and I, that's that's the reason for the channel is so that somebody can pop in with 20 minutes of their life have a laugh and then get back to their own life that's what the channel is for that's what the channel always has been for um with the exception of you know when it was starting as i explained at the beginning but if you've got some sort of emotional investment i don't know it sounds so stupid saying have you got an emotional investment in my channel it sounds so egotistical to say that but you know what i mean if you give a rat's, is what I'm trying to say, if you give a rat's about anything on this channel, then thank you. Thank you for putting some modicum of worth onto me. Because I often find having it's great difficulty for myself to put any worth on anything. And this channel and making these videos has allowed me to put worth onto myself. Is that the cat? No, I don't think that's the cat asking to come in. Um, it's a shame. I was rather hoping she'd be here tonight and, I, um, and, and we could say goodbye together. But, because she doesn't appear in many videos. And, hang on a second, I think she might be there. No, she's not. Sorry, we're going to end on an anti-climax because the cat isn't there. Um, she doesn't appear in as many videos as I'd like her to. She's very cute, I love her much. But... If you give a rat's about this channel, or anything that's on this channel, even if it's one moment of it, if it's one joke in one video, that is enough for me. If it is one moment, one atom, one millionth of a percentage of what this is, then thank you. Thank you for giving a rat's about me. And... Thank you for facilitating my development to the point where I could give a rat's about me. Because that's what this channel has done for me, and that's why I love it. And that's why I'm so sad that it has to change. Because it's taught me to give a rat's about myself, which is not something that I, I, I generally do. So, that probably sounds stupid. I feel like I've said that a hundred times, but I feel like i said this a hundred times as well. If you've gotten this far, maybe... Maybe you understand, but I don't know. It is what it is. This channel is what it is. This video is what it is. Whatever worth or value or purpose it has, I have no idea. I just hope the file size isn't so big that my video editor won't actually look at it. Because if not, I'm in big trouble because I can't convert it. Um, if I can't get it into my editor software, so that's going to be a fun little adventure. But... Either way, this has been special. This video has been special. This channel is special. And you are special to me. So, thank you ever so much for joining me for this entire evening, pretty much. Thank you, even though you don't realise it, for the way that you have looked after me. Look after yourself, look after each other, and I can't believe it, there's half a tear in my eye, there, there is genuinely half a tear in my eye. Oh gosh. Thank you very much for joining me this evening, ladies and gentlemen, look after each other, and good night.